and this is section 10.4 and today we're going to learn another method that we can use to cer solve certain types of quadratics equ equations. Um, this method would be using square roots to solve quadratics. Now this method there's some good and some real good positives and there's no negatives in it but there's um, some sh limitations I guess would be the better way to say it. There's great this method's great because it's easy. The limitation is it only works for certain kinds of quadratics. So that's what I'm putting here. This method is very easy to use, but here's the limitation. It only works for quadratics without a B value. Remember, in standard form, our quadratics, I'm going to write it in red just so it sticks out. A quadratic in standard form looks like this. We can't use square roots to solve quadratics in standard form unless the B value is zero which makes that disappear. In other words, it, it will work if my quadratics in this form, you notice there's no BX value in the middle. That's when I can use square roots to solve. Very simple method but that's the limitation to it. All right. So how do I use square roots to solve a quadratic of this form? I think the easiest thing to do would be to show you an example. And before I do that, I got a quick thing I need to explain here. You've heard me now for a couple months since we've worked on quadratics tell you that when you have a second degree equation, which is a quadratic or higher, you should always get everything on one side, all terms on one side and zero on the other. However, if you're going to use square roots to solve a quadratic, that's not true. In this case, you need to isolate x squared on one side of the equation and get c and a on the other side. So in other words, let me just write this down. Um, what I'm saying here would be very similar to what you do. I'm going to write down first degree equations. Okay, first degree. Oop, my pen just froze on me here. Come on, pen. There we go. First degree equations. That pen is, wow. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to pause this because this is not working. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. My, for whatever reason, my pen froze up and I couldn't get it to write. Now I got it working again. Okay, so what I was trying to say is in this method, you treat it like a first degree equation. Like, let me just review a first degree equation. Something simple. 4x plus 13 equals 57. When you solve this, you know what you need to do. You need to isolate x. You'd take away 13 and you'd get 4x, 4x on the left and 44 on the right and then you'd divide by 4 and you'd find out that x is 11. That's exactly the process you have to use if you're going to use the square root method to solving a quadratic. You've got to isolate, you have to isolate x squared. Okay, let's actually do that. Here's an example. All right. 2x squared minus 8 equals 0. So here we have to isolate x squared. I'm going to add 8 to each side first to isolate 2x squared on the left. Now I'm going to divide by 2. Okay, now think about it. In this, the whole year, think about this. To get rid of minus 8, I added 8. To get rid of times 2, I had to divide by 2. So I'm always doing inverses. The inverse of, inverse of subtracting is to add, and the inverse of multiplying is to divide. To get rid of a square, what's the inverse of squaring? Here's an incorrect response. I always have people every year, and they're thinking about this, and they're like, well, to get rid of a square, you just divide by 2. I'm doing it in red because that's wrong. Dividing by 2 doesn't get rid of a square. That's not the inverse. The inverse of squaring is to take the square root. Okay? So you now take the square root of each side. Well, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is technically we get two responses, plus or minus 2. So the result here, the correct answer, would be positive 2 or negative 2. I want to just show you that if we factor, if we go back to chapter 9, I'm going to think back to chapter 9. If we factor this problem, we get the same two solutions. Let me show you that real quick just to show you that you get the same results if you factor. Remember when we factored, we get, a, we get the greatest common factor first, which is a 2. Factor that out. 
Do you notice how this is a difference of squares? That's a shortcut. So I have x and 2, x minus 2, x plus 2 is the correct factoring. Well, to make this 0, x is 2, and to make that 0, x is negative 2, can you see I'm getting the exact same results? Okay? So again, the square root method, honestly, if I, I like the square root method better than the factoring method personally, um, because I can get the exact results, all right? Let's do another one. Here's number 4 on page 655. So again, pretty simple steps. I'm going to isolate x squared. I'm going to add 32 first. I'll divide by 2 second. And to get rid of x squared, I've got to square root each side. And remember, there's two solutions. It's positive and negative 4 for the solutions. Two solutions. Look at the key concept box on page 652. When you solve quadratics by using square roots, there's three things that can happen. Okay? If this value here, let me, oh, my layers here. If this value is greater than zero, you get two solutions to the problem. If you isolate x squared and d and the value here is a zero, you will get one solution. If you isolate x squared and d is a negative amount, you will get no solutions in that case. Okay? For example, if you're solving this equation, you're going to take away 12 from each side. And when you take away 12 from each side, you'll notice immediately, let me get this stuff out of the way, you'll notice you have b squared on the left, you have isolated the square and you have negative 7 on the right, you notice that's this situation right here. You have the square term on one side, you have a negative on the other, immediately you can quit. You have no solutions. Think about it. What number times itself can give you negative 7? That's impossible. No number times itself can give you a negative. So that's not a possible situation. Okay, be aware when you do your homework today, my couple, first couple examples worked out real nice into integers. These do not always work out into nice integers or whole numbers like they did on my first two examples, so we should do one that isn't nice. Like here on number 12, page 655, let's isolate b squared. We'll take away 11 first. We'll now divide by 25. We'll take the square root of each side to get b squared into b. And when I do that, I'm either going to get plus or minus two-fifths, or my calculator might give me plus or minus 0.4. Remember, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 25 is 5. I did that in my head. If you want to put this in your calculator, remember to put parentheses around your fraction, or your calculator will screw it up. Um, plus or minus 0.4 would be the solutions. Okay, not always going to be nice whole-numbered or integer answers. Some of the problems will ask you to round to the hundredth because, again, these don't always work out super perfect. Uh, here's number 20. Well, I've got to isolate a squared. I'll add 9 to each side. I'll divide by 2. I get a squared equals 10. If I take the square root of each side, the square root of 10 works out to a non-repeating, non-ending decimal. So I'm going to round it to the hundredth, and I'm going to get plus or minus approximately 3.16. I would encourage you right now to pause the video, put the square root of 10 in your calculator, and see that when you round it, you get 3.16. Okay? You can also use square root, um, the square root method with quadratics to solve quadratics that are in vertex form. Remember, vertex form, uh, we covered this in my 10 to C video. We sketched these, remember? We sketched vertex form quadratics. And again, my pen is pausing on me. Okay. We sketched, we sketched these. Okay. You can also solve vertex form quadratics using the square root method. And again, we have to isolate what's being squared first. So I have to divide each side by 6 to get the x squared term by itself, which I now have. To get rid of the square, since I'm having parentheses, I've got to get what's rid of outside of the parentheses first. I'm going to square root each side. 
When I square root each side, let me get these boxes out of the way so you can read what's on my video here easier. When you square root each side, remember, a square root and a square kind of cancel each other out, and you're left with x minus 4. Now over here, you're going to get the square root of 7. Now remember, when you take the square root of 7, you're going to get two responses. You're going to get the positive amount and the negative. So when I put the square root of 7 in my calculator, I get about 2.65. I'm going to get positive 2.65 and negative 2.65, but you notice I'm not done. What I learned here is I have x minus 4 is equal to plus 2.65 or minus 2.65. So I've got to continue. I'm not done yet. I still have to solve. I have to add 4 to each side. And when I do that, I'm going to get two solutions. I'm going to get positive 2.65 plus 4, and I'm going to get negative 2.65 plus 4. I get two solutions, the positive and the negative added with 4. And those two solutions then, remember, these are approximated. So I'm putting little squiggly equal sign. They're not exact. I'm getting about 6.65 or about 1.35 for my two solutions. Um, one more thing to walk through, and then I'm going to stop the video. Question 47, they give us, again, a problem. They give us the area of a circle, and they want us to find the radius. Now, remember, the formula for an area of a circle is pi r squared. So in number 47, they told me the circle area was 144 pi. So I plug that in for a. I want to find r. Now, remember, Pi, it looks like a variable, but it's not. It's a number. Pi is a number. I want to get r squared by itself, so I can use square roots. I'm going to use the square root method to solve this. I've got to get r squared by itself, so I'll divide each side by pi first. The pi's cancel, and the pi's cancel. I have r squared equals 144. I'll take the square root of each side. And I'm getting plus or minus 12. I should write that in. I'm getting positive 12 and negative 12. Now remember, since we're talking radius, the negative answer doesn't make any sense. I can't have a negative radius, so I'm going to get rid of that answer. I'll only keep the positive answer. R would be 12. And let's just do a couple more examples. Um, here we want to use the square root method to solve a quadratic. Remember, this is in vertex form. So step one, I got to divide by four thirds. I got to get the square term isolated. So I'm going to divide by four thirds, or I could times by three fourths. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by four thirds because that's what I've been teaching you throughout the year. I'll be consistent. Multiplying by three quarters would have been okay, but just to be consistent, to get rid of times four thirds, I'll divide. Okay. Don't forget to use parentheses when you put this in your calculator. So I get k minus 6 squared equals 15. Now I've got to take the square root of each side. Remember, a square root and a square cancel. So I have k minus 6 on the left. The square root of 15 is 3.87. I get the positive and negative value for that. I add 6 to each side. I get two solutions. I get positive 3.87 plus 6, which is 9.87. Roughly, it's approximate. I also get negative 3.87 plus 6, which is about 2.13 approximately. There's my two solutions. One last problem, number 41. I want to round this one to the nearest hundredth. Now here, I have variables on each side. I want to use the square root method to solve this. Now remember, in the square root method, you treat it like um, first degree equations. All right, we want to isolate that x squared. Well. I have x squared on both sides, so think about in first degree if we had variables on each side. Didn't we put all the variables on one side first in this method? And I hope you're coming up with the yeah, Mr. Lemansky, we had to put everything on one, all variables on one side. So it's the same thing here. Let's add 2x squared, get all the variables on one side. Well, now this is exactly what we've been talking about. This equation here would look exactly like the kind that we've been solving in my video. Let's add 35 to each side. I want to finish this up, okay? I don't know why I put this in here. It must have been last year. I must have been talking about something different. So let's finish that up. Um, we should add 35 to each side. That's going to give me 5x squared equals 80. I'll divide by 5. 
That tells me x squared would be, I think, 80 divided by 516 if I'm doing it in my head right. And I should square root each side. And I'd get x over here, and the square root of 16 is 4, so I have positive or negative 4. I can check it. Let's try 4. 4 squared 16 times 3 is 48. 48 minus 35 is 13. Do I get 13 over here is the question. 4 squared is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. And 45 minus 32 is 13. So that, that is definitely um, checking here. That checks out. This must be the correct solution. All right, I'll stop my video there. If we have more questions, we can talk about those tomorrow.